learning objectives after studying this module students will be able to understand the need of adjusting entries learn the concept of adjustment of closing stock know about outstanding expenses understand the concept of prepaid expenses no accrued income concept learn about depreciation and how to charge it understand the concept of bad debts and provision for bad and doubtful debts know the concept of interest on capital and its adjustments learn to calculate managers commission adjusting balances need for adjustments we need to adjust all the items in the accounts of the company so that the actual and true financial status of the company can be given to the stakeholders the accrual concept of accounting says that the expenses and income should be recorded in the period they occur it does not matter whether they are made in cash or not there may be some incomes or expenses that are adjusted in the current year but may relate to previous year so we need to adjust all these entries to have a clear view of the financial statements of a company for example we get a salary of the month of march 2018 in april 2018 So the salary account of March two thousand eighteen does not include salary of March and will be forwarded to next month as outstanding salaries and will be debited from the profit and loss account. Let us discuss the items that need adjustments. Closing stock, outstanding expenses. These expenses are those expenses. that are done and due in the current accounting year but are not paid for example outstanding wages outstanding salary outstanding rent etc it is very common in the business to have some expenses that are unpaid in the current accounting year these expenses are shown in the liability side of the balance sheet the amount that is outstanding should be added to the total expenses of the year for the trading and profit and loss account suppose in rahul's trial balance salary are shown as 25000 and he owes rupees 5000 salary to one of his employees for the previous year so the salary that is to be shown should be 30000 in trial balance and 5000 as current liability it will be termed as salary outstanding and will be adjusted to salary account by making the following entry salary account debited 5000 to salary outstanding account 5000 prepaid expenses these expenses are also known as future expenses as these expenses are paid in advance these are the advance payments made but some portion of the benefit of that would be received in the next accounting year the amount of such expenses would be carried forward in the next accounting year suppose rahul has paid rupees 10000 as salary to one of his employees in advance so it will be considered as prepaid expenses and entry would be done as prepaid salary account debited 10000 to salary account 10000 accrued income accrued income is the income that is earned by the company or business suppose a company sells a product or service to the customer but its money is yet to be received by the company like we invest in the mutual funds and its payout is to be received to the customers only after the locking period of 3 years it happens many times in the business that income is earned during the current year and have not received completely by the end of the same accounting year 
It is also known as income earned but not received or outstanding income. Accrued income is added in the related income in the profit and loss account while we make accounting entries and also it will be shown under the header assets in the balance sheet. Suppose Rahul received a commission of rupees 10,000 from some party for rendering his services to them. We assume that he has to still receive 2,000 commission from that party. So, the total commission earned would be 12,000. So, the adjustment for the accrued commission would be Accrued commission account debit 2000 to commission account 2000. So, important points regarding accrued income are This income has been earned during the accounting year. The company has the right to receive that amount. It has not yet been recorded in the ledger account. Income received in advance the accrual concept of accounting says that the income that is received in advance by the company is treated as a liability if they will be earned within one year. As that income is received by the company, but the company has not earned it. The company to supply the goods and services to the customer in future for that income received. All time the income is received in the current accounting year, but some portion of it is being earned in the next accounting year. This is also called as unearned income. The three types of income that is received but not earned are Payments received for social security work Compensation received for being unemployed Payments received for welfare work Suppose in March 2017, Rohit received an advance rent for three months from his friend at the rate of 1200 rupees per month. So that advance rent will be recorded like this in the journal books of accounts. Rent received account debited 3600 to rent received in advance account 3600 and it will be shown as liability in the balance sheet. Depreciation Depreciation means reduction in the value of an asset over the years due to wear and tear and usage. In accounting terms, depreciation is defined as the reduction in the cost which is recorded in the books of accounts of the fixed assets in a systematic manner until the value of the asset becomes zero or negligible. An example of fixed assets are buildings, furniture, office equipment, machinery etc. The causes for depreciation are some products have short lifespan so they need to be replaced, a product gradually breaks down when it is used for certain period of time as parts of the product wear and tear, a fixed asset may have right to use for a certain period of time. Some machinery becomes obsolete with the use of new machinery. In the balance sheet, the depreciation will be shown as cost of assets, depreciation and the adjustment entry for depreciation should be done like depreciation account debited to assets account. Suppose furniture with a cost of 20,000 is to be depreciated by 10% per annum. Then the entry should be depreciation account debited 2000 to furniture account 2000. Bad debts. What is debt? Debt is called as the money that is owed by the borrower to the lender. Bad debts. These expenses are referred to as the expenses those are owed by the customers but they don't pay. It is a loss that a company experiences when they sold goods and services to the customers but the customer do not pay the money immediately. It is basically a monetary amount 
that a customer is required to pay but do not pay due to the following reasons. Not having the money to pay. Suppose a company is going in insolvency. The bad debts expenses are also classified as selling or administrative expenses. The entry for bad debts accounts is done as bad debts account debited to debtors account. You will notice in earlier trial balance of Rahul a bad debt of 4500 rupees is recorded in the books of accounts and a debtor of 5000 rupees are mentioned in balance sheet. Now we assume that one of the debtors of Rahul who was supposed to pay him the amount of 300 rupees became insolvent. So the adjustment entry for the same will be done as follows. Bad debt account debited 300 to debtors account 300. This entry will reduce the debtors and balance sheet by rupees 300 and increase the bad debts to 4800 rupees. Provision for bad and doubtful debts. We have seen in the previous storyboard that the Rahul's balance sheet shows debtors of rupees 5000. There is a possibility that the whole amount of rupees 5000 may not be recovered in future. So it is not possible for an organization to accurately know the amount of such bad debts. So the company make an arrangement to bear this loss of bad debts. The organization estimates the amount of such loss and makes a provision of that loss. Such provision is called as provision for bad and doubtful debts. This amount of loss is debited to profit and loss account. Profit and loss account debited to provision for doubtful debts account. The amount that a company keeps for these doubtful debts is also deducted from the debtors in the assets side of the balance sheet. The provision for doubtful debts is also carried forward to next year and will be used for the same purpose of loss due to doubtful debts. That carried forward balance is known as opening provision or old provision. If the company has already created provision for doubtful debts, then the loss of bad debts in that current year will be first adjusted from the previous balance and if the provision for doubtful debts is created in current year, then that is known as new provision. Let us take an example where sundry debtors are 22,000, bad debts 2,000 and provision for bad debts is 3,500. Write off further bad debts of 1,500 and create a provision for doubtful debts at 5%. Provision for discount on debtors. Discount to debtors means when a business gives discount to debtors so they make payments on time. The amount of discount that an organization wants to give to debtors can be estimated well in advance so that necessary provision to give that discount can be created in the accounting year. Discount is allowed when the debtors of any business settle their accounts instantly. If the debtors of the current period settle their accounts instantly, in the succeeding period, discount will have to be given by Provision for the discount on debtors is created on the good debtors. Those good debtors can be calculated by deducting further bad debts and provision for bad debts. The entry for provision for discount on debtors would be Profit and loss account debited to provision for discount on debtors account. As we have mentioned earlier that the discount on debtors can be calculated only on good debtors. The amount of good debtors can be calculated by deducting the doubtful debts out of that. The adjustment entry for the same would be done as follows. Profit and loss account debited to discount on debtors account. In the balance sheet, it will be shown as a deduction from the debtors to find out the correct amount that we will receive from the debtors. Manager's Commission 
the field that is paid to a salesperson for giving his services in the business for completing a sale task is known as the commission the commission can be given as a flat fee or as a percentage of the income gross margin or profit earned out of sale the percentage of the commission is applied on the profit either before commission or after commission if no information is given then it is assumed that commission is allowed as a percentage of the net profit before charging such commission for example net profit of a business is 120 before charging commission if the manager is entitled to 5% of profit before charging commission then the commission will be calculated as in case the commission is 5% of profit after charging such commission the commission will be calculated as the entry for manager's commission would be done profit and loss account debited to manager's commission account let us take an example and assume that rahul's manager is given a commission at 10% prepare profit and loss account on the basis of net profit after charging this commission net profit before charging this commission manager's commission is calculated in two ways one on profits before charging such commission manager's commission is equal to net profits into percentage of commission divided by 100 second on profit after charging such commission manager's commission is equal to net profits into percentage of commission divided by 1 plus percent of commission interest on capital what is capital the funds that were raised to support a business or for a project are called as capital it is the wealth of a business gathered over a period of time it is calculated by capital is equal to assets minus liabilities capital can also mean ownership in a firm interest on capital interest on capital is the amount payable on the additional capital to the partner it happens in the business at times a businessman wants to know the profit of the business after giving the interest on capital the interest is calculated at a given rate of interest of capital in the beginning of the accounting year if suppose additional amount of capital is added in the business during the accounting year then the interest on capital will be calculated on that amount from the date when it was added to business interest on capital is treated as expense of the business and the entry would be done as given in the final accounts it is shown as expense in the debit side of the profit and loss account and added to capital in the balance sheet for example we assume that rahul decides to give 5% interest on capital the amount of interest on capital in that case would be 5% of 12000 that amounts to be 600 rupees the interest on capital would be in the balance sheet it should be added into the capital the adjustment would be done as done in referred image entries at a glance adjustment closing stock adjustment entry closing stock account debited to trading account in trading and profit and loss account shown on credit side of trading and profit and loss account balance sheet shown on the asset side adjustment outstanding expenses adjustment entry expense account debited to outstanding expenses account in trading and profit and loss account added to the expense on the debit side of the profit and loss account balance sheet shown on the liability sides of the balance sheet adjustments prepaid expenses adjustment entry prepaid expense account debited to expense account in trading and profit and loss account 
deducted from the respective expense on the debit side. Balance sheet shown on the asset sides of the balance sheet. Adjustment Income earned but not received. Adjustment entry Accrued income account debited to income account. In trading and profit and loss account added to the respective income header on the credit side. Balance sheet Shown on the asset side of the balance sheet. Adjustment. Income received in advance. Adjustment entry. Income account account debited to income received in advance account. In trading and profit and loss account. Deducted from the respective income on the credit side. Balance sheet. Shown on the liabilities side of the balance sheet. Adjustment. Depreciation. Adjustment entry. Depreciation account debited to assets account. In trading and profit and loss account shown on debit side. Balance sheet deducted from the value of the asset. Entries at a glance continued. Adjustment provision for bad and doubtful debts. Adjustment entry profit and loss account debited to provision for doubtful debts. In trading and profit and loss account, shown on debit side, balance sheet, deducted from the debtors, adjustment, provision for discount on debtors, adjustment entry, profit and loss account debited, to provision for discount on debtors, in trading and profit and loss account, shown on debit side, balance sheet, deducted from the debtors, adjustment, manager's commission. Adjustment entry, manager's commission account debited to outstanding commission account. In trading and profit and loss account, shown on debit side. Balance sheet, shown on the liability side. Adjustment, interest on capital. Adjustment entry, interest on capital account debited to capital account. In trading and profit and loss account, shown on debit side. Balance sheet. Shown as addition to the capital. Adjustment. Further bad debts. Adjustment entry. Bad debts account debited. To sun-dry debtors account. In trading and profit and loss account. Shown on debit side. Balance sheet. Deducted from the debtors. Summary. Let us summarize what we have learnt in this module. The cost of unsold goods lying in the stores at the end of the accounting period is closing stock. The expenses of an accounting period remain unpaid at the end of an accounting period. They are termed as outstanding expenses. Income earned during the accounting period but not actually received is called as accrued income. The portion of the income which belongs to the next accounting period is termed as income received in advance or an unearned income. Depreciation is the decline in the value of assets on account of wear and tear and passage of time. Bad debts refer to the amount that the firm that has not been able to realize from its debtors.